Thank you to Knesset a member Yair Lapid. We are continuing in order. We have invited the heads of the uh, parties to have their say. The only uh, exception is the next speaker. The Prime Minister was unable to come and speak beyond the logistical problems that it would have cost us here. upon the chair of Meretz, M.K. Zahava Galon. Good day to everyone. Uh, I would like to express my condolences I just I mistakenly said Uri Ariel instead of Uri Orbach. I apologize. Uh, they say you live a long time if people make a mistake like that. Uh, I didn't start out so well. I hope I continue a little bit better. I'd like to express my condolences to the Orbach family. Uri Orbach was a witty rival and to die at such a young age, at 54, most of our friends are on the way to the funeral, and I'm here with you, and I will answer the questions that I was asked, uh, the questions that I've been asked in recent weeks throughout this entire election campaign. We've been hearing excuses from former ministers. The prime minister is still the prime minister explaining to us why the whole world is against us, Iran and ISIS and the Americans and the Europeans. Everybody wants to do us harm. Uh, and what we're hearing, the impression is, is that uh, soon we're going to be overrun by Amalek led by Khamelnitsky. And it's, uh, you know, it's hard to understand how we've managed to survive a week to say nothing of 67 years. And of course, our Prime Minister has been busy not only in destroying the relations between the U.S. and Israel, and we're hearing already how the Americans are taking their retribution and are going to uh, keep important information from Israel regarding the Iranians and the Americans can no longer bear the behavior of the Prime Minister and the absence of all those democratic people from the, his speech should be very clear that he should give up this idea of going to speak, but he's busy with his own thing. But the most problematic thing, what he's doing is destroying what remains of the social solidarity in Israel. You've heard left is ISIS, and Netanyahu is personally behind that campaign. As far as Netanyahu is concerned, the regional picture is very clear. And we hear the media, the Israel Prize, everyone wants to destroy the straight state. And we have all our enemies, ISIS, Iran, Obama. It's uh, uh, concerning and it's infuriating, but what concerns me even more is the moral weakness of those who want to be the alternative to Netanyahu, who in recent weeks have been behaving like Likud number two. Has anyone heard a clear alternative from what's known as the Zionist camp, something that doesn't sound like Netanyahu's declarations? In recent weeks, I've heard Tepi Livni say that Jerusalem will not be divided and that Israel is a Jewish state forever. And Omar Balev told us this week that Yitzhak Herzog is the uh, leader that will have the guts to attack in Iran and that we don't have a Palestinian partner. So, and I read the platform of the Zionist camp and you, if you want to know what it says as far as their solution is, we will enlist the world against terror and against our neighbors. They are supposed to be the alternative. Can that be more Bibi than Bibi? 
That doesn't sound like a political platform. That sounds like an excellent platform for a meeting of Livni and Herzog for another four years of paralysis. Herzog and Livni need to propose a clear platform of a camp of a camp that plans to reach a peace agreement. And I say that because I see in recent weeks, but it's not only in recent weeks, leadership that is deluded, that believes that the uh, recipe to its paranoia is anyone who dares to say that something. The fear of talking about the real problems of Israel, a state that is on the downslide vis-a-vis -vis the Americans and the Europeans and the international community. Someone who can talk about victimization and uh, about uh, tr uh, trying to procrastination, that is something that is uh, an offense to our intellect. Instead of looking us in the eye, looking back, going back to a sane track, instead of b providing us with hope that Israel will have a, be a normal state with proper boundaries, we're talking, we're hearing about Iran and ISIS and enticement and an attempt to draw the discussion into other areas. So our biggest challenge is, first of all, to free ourselves of this victim's mentality that is characteristic of uh, uh, Netanyahu's uh, regime. Everything is just crying and victimization. In the last five years, nothing has been done to serve the interests of the state of Israel. First and foremost, what serves the interests of the extreme messianic right wing. So I would like to propose, first and foremost, that we stop looking for excuses. We keep trying to understand, we keep trying to explain to us why it's impossible. I think that we should start providing hope instead of letting Netanyahu's um, f uh, paralyzing fear take over. I would like to propose a leadership model of a of a vision that is not fear, that is not panic. We won't talk about ISIS. We'll talk about the real problems Israel is facing. And first and foremost, we have to begin, we have to stop talking about annex, annexing the extreme right wing's apartheid state to Israel. And what I have said should now, I would now talk about steps. First of all, we have to stop building outposts. If we want to have a democratic, enlightened state, we need to stop, we need to freeze building uh, and construction in settlements and in illegal outposts. Otherwise, we will become a binational state. And I know that most of the people in Israel don't want that. And I think the state needs to enforce the laws of illegitimate construction and building and to prevent from those ministers who are exploiting their power and their positions, especially now in this twilight period of time, pre-elections, who are exploiting their positions in order to pour money into settlements and illegal outposts. And what's more important, that and more, no, no less important, is stopping this rhetoric on both sides, the Palestinian and the Israeli, against the negotiations. This security coordination that has allowed us to have quiet, to have less terrorist attacks, I think that is an Israeli interest. And the third step I would like to talk about, one more of the trust building steps, is to relieve Gaza of the siege slowly and to cooperate with the moderate people there. I heard Tony Blair yesterday or two days ago who came back shocked from his visit in Gaza and he said to the Gaza, he said that Gaza is under siege, that it is demolished, that people have no hope and they have nothing to lose, so you cannot expect them to try and impact uh, those who are fighting against those who are responsible for this. If we want to weaken Hamas, we need to strengthen the people of Gaza in those moderate factions. And the last and final and fourth step is to finally adopt the Arab initiative to start collaborating 
with the countries in the region that will enable a regional peace and will also force the Palestinians back into negotiations that will give Israel collaterals and warranties that will strengthen the moderate at the expense of Hamas. And yes, that also includes having to say very clearly that we are willing to end the occupation, that we are supporting a Palestinian state alongside the Israeli one in recognized boundaries that are based on 1967 with the adjustments needed. And whoever does not support this supports the continued occupation and with ending Israel as a democracy. Dear distinguished guests, no one promises us anything, not collaboration from the Palestinians, and not an agreement, and not two states, and not Iran demilitarized of nuclear weapons, and not pacifist Hamas. And I cannot promise that. I have no idea if merits will be part of the next government, and what it will, the next government will look like. I know what I aspire to, and perhaps we, I can, we can soberly also change the regime. But I can promise you that without trying, we will never succeed. And we all know that the government's path of being pass passive, of being enticing, of gradually annexing the settlements and blaming the whole world, we know that's a recipe for more and more violence and more and more bloodshed, and that really is not leading us anywhere. Waiting is not a policy. Managing the conflict is not a policy. It only leads to what happened over the last decade, a policy of conflict management. And at Merits, we are proposing a real change, soberly, cautiously, a clear plan with a vision and a goal. Israel, democratic and uh, progressive with support internationally and legitimacy. And with, before I say anything about being a just society and the need to fight against a corrupt economy, whoever wants a just economy, a just society whose parameters for a just economy are not just growth. If you want a just society, you need to fight corrupt economy. You need to fight the social and economic gaps. You need to in engage in equality. We have proposed a plan that talks about the cost of living, but we cannot talk about a just society without ending the occupation and continuing to uh, control other people. And therefore, I think that it's in our hands. Thank you very much.